Hey golfers and welcome back to another episode of Second Swing Thoughts. Today's a special one. We are going over the Fitters Choice Award. That's kind of a hat tip to Golf WRX, if you will, what they had their Members Choice Awards this year. And we're doing our Fitters Choice and I've got Tyler Fitzel with me. Uh, we're going to break down uh, the drivers and irons today uh, among the, I guess, the popular choices of the Fitters here at Second Swing. But first, golfers, Second Swing is the place to go for holiday shopping this year. Whether it's for yourself or a friend or a family member, Second Swing has the best deals on golf equipment, apparel, accessories, tech, and more. Plus, our industry-leading service team is also available to answer any questions you may have to ensure you give the perfect gift this holiday season. So keep checking SecondSwing.com throughout November and December for the latest deals and crush your holiday shopping this year. So Mr. Tyler Fitzel is with us today, a debut on the podcast. Tyler, um, I guess before we get into it, let's maybe let you introduce yourself a little sure. bit to the viewers and the listeners. So Master Club Fitter, um, you have, I think, as many, your, your, your fitting education is uh, among the elite out there. So uh, you got you to gotta let the people know what that's all about. Well, I appreciate that. Thanks. It's great to be here. Well, I think the first thing is to take back. I, I really love golf, mm -hmm. so I started right away, even through college, as I muddled my way through college and I, I get done with that, I started to build clubs on my own, and I got interested in it. And that whole segment of kind of club builder, club repair, fitter, yeah, uh, that kind of went away as uh, we see the more specialty shops kind of dropping away as well. But I'd, I'd started that, so um, that was almost 30 years ago. So I'd been got, I got into the equipment. I was always, let's call it the equipment junkie, right? But the technical side of it, you know, what does the company says the shaft's gonna do? What kind of loft is on this? Uh, mm -hmm. What kind of, you know, technology uh, metals that we're using? Uh, that, that really plays a big part into my education. So going back to that, now I've been with uh, Second Swing nearly eight years in the fitting world. So when I came on board, the the equipment and technical side wasn't the issue as much as it was just getting into uh, the fitting bay and helping mm -hmm. people find, you know, better equipment. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. So that's actually, that's kind of what today's all about. I mean, it's helping yeah. golfers, customers, you know, find the clubs that work best for them. And so what we did is we kind of, well, essentially what you did, um, you can kind of maybe break it down a little bit further, but you more or less created a survey that you instituted and installed for the fitters in the company to answer and that's a pretty wide bank of certified and trained club fitters uh, throughout you know our online teams and our and our six store locations so uh, why don't you give us that breakdown of kind of what that survey entailed and then we'll dive into the drivers yeah so what we really wanted to do is kind of take a snapshot of what we were seeing in the fitting bays and the whole premise to this is I've kind of think back in my own my own mind what's what is this year of mm -hmm. you know each year we kind of look at things and say this is the year of drivers is this the year of irons is this the year of wedges or putters or is this the year of golf balls you know when when uh every company has a new golf ball out it's kind of like all right which golf ball right. you know is right for you and, mm -hmm. and, and from a fitter's perspective we all of the pieces of the equipment matter um with drivers i think this was the year of the drivers and more specifically we talk about ball speed on miss hits, mm -hmm. and we talk about dispersion. And I think uh, 2023, we saw in drivers the the longest, straightest drivers that have ever been on the market. Really? Yeah. And so from that, as we look at it, the miss hits were better than ever and, before. Than ever before. Hmm. And that that's kind of where the technology dri uh, in drivers is is currently at. It's like they they have certain legal limits. You can't go more than right. you know so big, and you can't more you know wait this far. And mm -hmm. as, as you start looking at the limitations that the USGA puts out on it, the the driver is really trying to make the ball go straighter and farther with all of these uh, limits around the outside. But the one thing that's not capped off in terms of that is the company's innovation to getting faster ball speeds. Right. So even if it's a little bit more low on the toe or high high on the heel. Yep. Those ball speeds are better, the spin numbers are better, uh, the ball's flying a little bit straighter off of those. So that's one of the things that we see. The mm. other things that we see in, in the iron game right now is 2023 was the year of the player iron. 
Mm -hmm. we, we talk about that as like, well, what's a player? I think the first two categories is where you have a more traditional blade or a slight cavity back is, is one um, iron that we look at. The other one is more of a player's distance as well. Uh, and so those two categories in irons were absolutely dominated by a few companies. And really? we'll talk about maybe even a, one surprise in that too. Okay, interesting, interesting. So from there, let's, let's dive into the drivers then. So I know mm -hmm. um, we talked about the four categories that we're gonna break up the drivers into. So yep. um, we've got your high MOI driver, which is sort of, I guess, some might call it the quote unquote standard model of each of these different yep. series that the manufacturers release. Mm -hmm. We've got low spin drivers, we've got the draw bias drivers, and then we also have the, uh, I guess, dr ladies or women's drivers as yeah. well. And so um, I guess we can start with the high MOI category because yeah. that typically is going to, uh, you know, work for the widest range of players. Yeah. So in the high MOI category, kind of give us the feedback that you got from the fitters there. Every single fitter chose the Ping G430 Max as one of their top iron or top drivers for MOI. Really? Yep. So the Max in our fitting bay, mm -hmm. in our discussions, in our work with customers, the G430 Max was pit picked every single time. Wow. So now to that, it's interesting because there's about six different drivers that we list yeah. in this category from several different companies. Mm -hmm. um, one vote behind it, so all but one fitter, chose the Titleist TSR2. Okay. And then a couple more votes back was the Callaway Paradigm. And so we start thinking about a lot of the other uh, drivers on the market, whether we're talking about a TaylorMade, a Cobra, we're talking about Sirixen, Mizuno, we're talking mm -hmm. about all these other companies, they didn't see that popularity or the results as much, right. but they're absolutely put into play. Yeah. So they're absolutely tested in it. Just turns out that these yeah. three companies, who, which okay. dominate the driver market, are dominating the driver yeah, market. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Because it's kind of a combination, because there's also a point in the fitting process where the, the golfer customer then gets to ask, I want to try this driver or I want to try this driver. And so yes. it, there's a, a little bit of the popularity aspect into these results, but also the performance and the data that is shown in the fittings yes. as well, turns out. So um, when you say one of the top, is there three Is it three drivers that they're selecting for this, each fitter? Yeah, so the, the, the choices were pretty much everything in the category. Yeah. And we'd asked fitters to rank their one, two, and three. Got it, okay. And so with that, along goes the the one, two, three. Yeah. So even if we're talking about the first choice was the ping, yeah. G430 Max, um, the second choice, the most number of votes was the Titleist TSR2, and the sure. third was the Callaway Paradigm. Yeah, okay. And so from a, from a choice perspective, they even rank one, two, three. I still look at those three, and if I'm in a fitting, if someone comes in and says, well, I really, really want to you know, try X, Y, or Z, we're trying it yeah, without totally. question uh, because it's just an experiment to see whether or not this is going to work, that combination. And then I'm going to put one of these, generally one or two of these, or maybe all three of them in someone's hand to see what's going on. And uh, they, they typically come out on top, mm -hmm. as we've seen in our fittings, sure. uh, and that's where the, the choices come from. Yeah. So. I mean, definitely Ping's always been a leader in forgiveness, no doubt about that. They yeah. definitely kind of picked up the speed a little bit this year. Yep. Those TSR drivers are fantastic, and we can get more into that too with the low spin category. But I guess what I'm saying is a uh, long-winded way of, of, I guess, expressing that. I'm not surprised to see these three driver models you know, yeah. rank towards the top in this high MOI category. So um, now the let's go to the low spin category. So mm -hmm. for the players that, I mean, generally, a little faster speeds, kind of trying to keep that spin rate down a little bit. So how did the results come out in this category? Well, I know this is, uh, it's something that you would you would kind of view as obvious, but yeah. the same three companies come out on top okay. again. Yeah. So Ping with the, the overall uh, vote, the number one driver voted in the low spin category was the TSR3. Oh. And uh, that's one, I mean, the, the whole market is really driven around the technology that Titleist put together in this latest model, this mm -hmm. TSR model. Their models um, really encompass the 
the ball speed on off center hits. They really encompass the idea mm -hmm. of spin numbers. They also have a really, really nice forgiveness factor. Right. And so, uh, not not to slight them, they had the number one choice. Ping was in there as well, and then the the triple diamond, um, the triple diamond LS from Callaway in their paradigm lineup. I would still call that probably the sneaky one. Okay. There's there's still some more. Uh, um, you have some more uh, variabilities, and so like I can move weight in one way or another. I can change loft. I sure. can change lie. The same is true in the Titleist and the Ping, and that's where I think those drivers come out on top. Um, you know, it, we never talk poorly about others. We yeah. say, well, then where is company X, Y, or Z in this? They're really, really good. Our, our fitters made a lot of comments about some other drivers, and one of them, as an example, was like the Cobra, the Aerojet LS, was almost always the low spin in terms of raw spin numbers. Yeah. Maybe not in terms of direction, dispersion, or, or even ball speed and distances. But that made that had a lot of votes there. And because we it was generating the lowest spin numbers? Yes. Which is, I mean, I, as we think about that, there is a lot of players out there that that might be their primary goal, is yep. to lower spin. And so Aerojet LS might be the number one contender for a lot of players. Yep. But I guess when you, when you, when you try and take everything into the equation, maybe it doesn't rank in the top three. Yeah, and so I don't want that to go by the wayside either because right. even though it may not have been in the top three and it didn't lead in any category or come close, the reality is that we also a lot, we, we gather information from our fitters, like please leave some comments, what mm -hmm. do you see? What, and and that's, that's another one um, where it's not to slight any of these companies because no. everyone's making such a great product. Yeah. The idea is like, it's really, really tough in our fittings to try to pare this down with a certain number of swings before someone gets tired. Right, yeah, that's you know? another, that's a very key aspect of the fitting is yeah. a certain number of swings and then I know there's a certain point in every fitting where you kind of hit that 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 peak, if you will, and then you see the, the number start to, the swing speed number starts to decrease a little bit and I know you as a fitter, you're like, all right, it, that, now it's time to really narrow things down at this point. Yeah. So there's a lot of, uh, fine-tuning those numbers that has to happen at that point. So so we got Titleist TSR3, yep. we got the G430 LST, and then the Paradigm Triple Diamond yes. um, making the, the top three here. So now in the draw bias category, curious if um, we get the same three uh, brands in the top three this time. Well, now we don't. Ooh, get and a little change of pace here. We do, and I think, um, I, again, Ping comes out on top mm -hmm. in terms of the SF tech or straight yep. flight technology. Uh, they made an adjustment to their 430 SF tech this year, and that was not only did they have the heaviest weight and the lightest body that they've had, they, they've done that for a few models in a row. They now give us the ability to move from draw, from draw to more draw. Yeah. So we're able to move that, that, that weight piece a little bit more inside um, for kind of the max, uh, let's see, slice forgiveness there you go uh because we know that something that's draw biased doesn't necessarily mean the draw the ball is going to draw it just might mean that it, it moves moves less in general so yeah. it's not as right or as left um so they were number one on it the callaway paradigm x yeah which again is internally weighted with, with some draw bias was second by only one vote so that, that means that those two drivers are at the mm -hmm. top of that scale. Sure. And a very close third to that was the Stealth 2 HD. Okay. And what, I, what we find in, in all of the draw, ba uh, draw bias drivers is typically there's a lie angle that's a little bit more upright. Yep. And there's more weight that's into the heel that helps to allow the face a little bit more closure time uh, and allows it for a little bit straighter ball flight to it. And we expect to see companies like that in the mix. We don't have a Titleist in this, although they have the ability in like their TSR3, you can move the weight all the way to the heel. Right, yeah. But when we're talking about th this category as more of a uh, slice forgiveness, draw bias type head, um, Titleist was a little bit back on that list. Yeah. And oh, uh, like, can't win everything. <laughs> but so far, I mean, Callaway and Ping, um, have been yeah, in that's everything, true. <laughs> so that that that's another piece to the puzzle there too. Yeah, yeah. I think the certainly, like you mentioned, I think it's important to 
for golfers that might struggle with the slice that are watching or listening and have been pondering that decision to get a quote unquote draw bias driver. Doesn't mean you're gonna hit a draw, yep. but it might mean your slice doesn't slice as much, or it might be a little fade instead of a slice at that right. point because your ball is starting, the starting line is a lot straighter or even maybe left of your target Correct. compared to where it was or where it is now. Yep. And because of that, the ball is then gonna spin a little bit, I guess have a lower side spin number. Yes. And then that will reduce the slice effect. So that's what these drivers do. And like you mentioned through the weighting in the heel, uh, there's, you know, the, the, the lie angle up, upright a little bit more. Um, and then of course with the drivers too, there's the hosel that you can toy with too. So like there's yep. even f more draw bias to be had with these drivers. If you are a mega slicer, which I know there's a lot of those people out there. <laughs> most, most, yeah, yeah we see yeah. that. Mm -hmm. So that, it was really interesting too, because we're, we're getting a glimpse shortly into the 2024 equipment and the same kind of the same things are being talked about in drivers again in terms of ball speeds, better launch and spin numbers, um, straighter, mm -hmm. having better dispersion. And so th this isn't a topic that's just all of a sudden going to go away. No. Every company has at least three driver types for this specific reason. Something that's a little lower spinning, something that's just kind of uh, max forgiveness, mm -hmm. um, and something that's more a little bit more draw bias. So mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to see how this holds up as we look at even next year, um, predicting, okay, what do we think is going to work? And then um, when we're done doing this again to see, it's like, so what happened in the fitting bay? Right. Yeah, that's what I know we're very excited for PGA Showtime. Uh, that's kind of when the, we get to first see all the, the new gear. Yep. So, um, all right, let's get into the women's, our, our uh, ladies driver category here. Yeah, uh, one, of the, one of the things I wanted to make um, evident in this to begin with is the idea we we fit um, a lot of women in the in the, our hitting bays but we don't talk a lot about the women's equipment and so one of the things I wanted to make sure that we captured was this general idea about what what we're seeing um, whether it's two three four uh, women a day mm -hmm. that we see whether it's a dozen mm -hmm. um, whatever it is is like what did we see with that? And that's kind of for us is like, that is very, very important information. It's like, I know what I've seen. I yeah. know what I've done. I know what works for me. And so we try some of those things, but it's always great to listen to our other fitters and, and get feedback from them about that right. too. Right, right. And it's also something to note too, like a female golfer should not automatically assume, hey, I play a quote unquote ladies flex driver or yep. the driver, you know, on the, in the fitting bay on the display, you know, that's a quote unquote female driver head, right? Because yeah. there's a lot of females out there that might not think it, but they do have the swing speed necessary that maybe a regular flex and a men's driver is actually what they need to play. Yeah. And, and that's, I'd say there's two common things that happen with women, especially when it comes to the drivers. They've got what the guy in their life may have cut down mm, or mm -hmm. left as it is and said, here, hit this. So they have kind of the leftover to that. Yeah. Or they come in and they do automat, maybe not automatically assume, but kind of assume is like, hey, let's look at women's drivers. And the reality is there's no such thing outside of marketing. Right. There's a driver. And then there are the attributes that go with it for shaft, for length, mm -hmm. for loft. For, and that's the blend of our fitting is to try to make sure that we have the right tools in your hand, not, yeah. not whether they say men's or women's or have a certain color on it. Right. So with that said, the, I guess, quote unquote, women's driver category, um, what were the top three options there? Well, not surprising, but Ping does come into the top here again. And more specifically, this is the GLE-3 model. Sure. Um, Ping has made some great adjustments to their previous models to this. So they do have some technology for maybe a little bit better ball flight. Um, they also have a really uh, neutral color scheme, I think, which helps. Yeah. Because I think co color is, this is the, Ping's the only driver that really kind of difference, uh, makes a uh, change in color versus a lot of the other uh, companies are kind of neutral, whether yeah. it's a black or a gray or something that's just kind of neutral to that. Yeah. Um, the other thing that was really interesting about this is the, the number two driver was a TSR-1. Okay. And that 
that's not necessarily for women, but it is an option for women as well as men. It's a lightweight, um, higher ball flight, more mm -hmm. forgiving option that Titleist offers. And the third, which was actually tied with Callaway, has the, the Big Bertha Riva, which is a really, really solid lineup for, for women. But that's also tied with the Ping G430HL. Okay. Which again is, yeah. it, it's, it's a kind of an all-encompassing. Uh, it is a much lighter weight, lighter flex. Um, the heads, the shaft is lighter weight mm -hmm. and flex. The head is lighter weight. Um, it allows for a little bit more launch to that. And what, what, it, what we see in drivers in general is that the faster the ball speed goes, uh, the, the more spin we kind of need to take off versus right. the slower the swing ge gets and the, the slower the ball, the ball flight or the um, ball speed is, we need to get the ball up right. a bit more. So the high launch for launch side of this helps to create more launch and spin, which actually keeps the ball in the air longer. Right, which is the better result. And I can actually yeah. vouch for the G430HL. My wife got fit this year for a driver, and that's what it ended up being, which is not necessarily what I would anticipate anticipated going into the fitting. But, you know, she's kind of a, you know, comes in from the right to left, sort of the swiper, if you will, with the swing. And so um, getting rid of that side spin stabilizing the club face, but then also just getting the ball and letting it hang in the air a little bit more with that straighter ball flight is what helped her. And so G430HL definitely like on my radar, at least in this category. And then we should also mention with the TSR1, that's a, again, it's this is kind of a category essentially for players that might swing the driver at 75 miles an hour or slower. Yeah. Um, so male, female, whoever that might be, yep. all of these drivers work for those players. Well, and it kind of leads to your point earlier, which was that you know, we're not fitting necessarily for a woman. Yeah. We have traits that work well in certain categories. So like the, the, the G430 HL could be any of the G430 models. This just happened to be the max. Right. And so when we start talking about it, like you can get uh, the HL model in their SF Tech or Straight Flight. You can get it in their low spin. Um, and so one of the comments that's interesting too is, is if you start to break these down, Ping did really well with their GLE3, but the GLE3 is is made in one option and one option only for loft. Yeah. And that's... so the insights to that as you start thinking about uh, the other, uh, you can you can adjust the loft, but I mean there's only one static one, loft. Yeah, one stated loft. Yeah. Um, but with with Titleist or even Callaway for that matter, is you can change the loft, and with Ping you you do have an adjustable sleeve that mm -hmm. that you can do that to some degree as well. So. Um, there's just a, a, when we start to look at the options for women, they've been as great as they have ever been. And so that's the key is that we're not just kind of stuck to this one option anymore. And we have the ability to really fine yeah. tune things. Yeah. A lot better than we've ever have. Right. Yeah. That's, that's the best part about all of this is there's so many options, um, yeah. out there that can be, and with, you know, hundreds of thousands of combinations available just in the the tour van, yeah. you know, you have all the shafts, you have all the different club heads. Um, you could go so many different directions with that. So, mm -hmm. um, all right, I think it's time to turn the page to the irons now. <clears throat> so we've got kind of a similar cadence here is my understanding. So sure. um, we've got, I guess we'll start again. We did these sort of high MOI drivers to start. So maybe yeah. we'll start at that end of things with irons, sort of the, I guess, game improvement irons or the yeah. high handicap type irons that you guys fit this year. So top three options there. Uh, number one, without question, the, the Ping G430. Mm. And Ping has continued to make a line of clubs that have really sit, sat in the market as um, not just game improvement, but just, uh, uh, I would say, more directional as well. They're, they're very forgiving irons, mm -hmm. so you can get the distance to that. You can get the launch. You, you, um, you have the ability to, to garner some speed with that. Um, the, the big thing is that, not that Ping's at the top to this, but there are some other really, really interesting notes. The second place vote, and it's very, very close to that, is the Mizuno 923 Hot Metal High Launch. Okay. And so that JPX lineup um, the, that came out a year ago yep. is in its first full year and is going to go through another year here. 
um, just like the Ping G430, we're going to see that all next summer as well, um, is getting the ball in the air. And one of the comments that I thought was really interesting from one of our fitters was, you know, pretty much all the line, uh, the irons, unless you go to that blade style, real yeah. low pro handicap style iron, they don't spin enough. Mm -hmm. And so it's we've kind constant of... Constant, I mean, everything I hear it all the time from any fitter is, I need to get more spin on these irons, you know? Yeah. That's, that's all I hear. And so if we don't get spin, we can also, we can also uh, help an iron by getting it up. So if we get ball speed, but we get the ball up in the air, it'll still come down steeper and stop a little mm -hmm. quicker. And so that, that's kind of one of the things that we've seen in the trends to that. Um, another one that was really high on that list was uh, the TaylorMade Stealth HD iron. Oh, yeah. And what they, what they did, again, for, for high, sort of high launch, was it created a bit more of a cavity to it. Mm -hmm. um, and they wanted to get the mass deeper, farther back to get the ball higher up. And so we see some of the best irons on the market as the ones that are having more loft to get more launch. Yeah. And that I, doesn't surprise I, me either. Because, I mean, yeah. I actually, I know, well, G430 went actually a little bit stronger this year than they the past did. one, barely. But it's still yeah. among the, I guess, higher lofted game improvement irons out there. Yeah. Um, and then, obviously, the HL from the JPX 923 series is, I believe, it's like 31 degrees maybe in the 7 iron, something like that. Yeah, it is. And then... Right. Um, yeah, and then the Stealth HD is certainly an interesting looking club. Mm -hmm. uh, but you look at that club and it just screams forgiveness and high launch. It with, does. It's almost, it's very shallow face, you know, a lot of weight back back there. So I guess I'm not surprised to see any of those on there, uh, to, you know, with those three top options there. Uh, all three really good ones, for sure. Yeah. Um, moving now, we can do the player's distance or, or I guess mid handicap. Sure. Category. So this is uh, another, like you mentioned, I think this is still another category where the fitters, at least, uh, I hear a lot, still looking for more spin here. Yes. But there's certainly a lot of hot club faces in this category, too. Yeah. And one of the things about this category is it ends up being the largest number of options. Yeah, you're right. And, you know, when we start talking about, like, uh, blades or slight cavity backs, which we will in a moment, that's obviously a category that is not... Um, it's not the majority of the market, mm -hmm. but it's a part of the market, and it services a, a, a good part of the market. The high handicap or the, the super game improvement type, those types of clubs are very usually very big and bulky. Now, um, with this middle player's distance, it's kind of trying to blend those two categories right. together. So when it gets squished in the middle, there's like eight or nine choices to this. Mm -hmm. um, interestingly enough, the number one um, choice was the Titleist T200. Okay. And we've seen that being kind of a trend for the last few years. At, it is almost blade-like in its look, but the cavity back allows for really, really hot ball speeds. Mm -hmm. What that does is, and even for some of the other game improvement styles, when they reduce a little bit of loft, that still allows for that club to maintain some, some lot, launch on it. But really what we're talking about is, I'm going to hit, be able to hit this a little bit further. So now if I want to hit a little higher, I'm still hitting less club anyway. I'm going from... Oh, totally. I'm yeah. not going from a 7 iron. I'm just going to go to an 8 iron. It's going to fly. It's going to fly just like I need it to. It's going to have ball speed. It's going to yeah. launch and it's going to it's land. It's sort of like it. the performance of the club, the ball flight isn't changing, but the club you might use or the number on the club you might use might change. Right. And that's. It's a little bit wonky how it's going. You know, you know you're... You're, you might hit your 8-iron like you used to hit a 7-iron now type of thing. So, uh, But the T200, you know, I know there was maybe some comments about the previous version and how kind of the sound and it was a little yeah. bit bulky, but I think the the most recent one here, they've really refined. I think they've yeah. almost perfected it as a player yeah. resistance iron. The, the first iron, the first one that came out was actually kind of the AP3, and then they changed the yeah. naming. Mm -hmm. And so very similar was the uh, T200, and that was the first generation, and that, that was really good. The second was was kind of in between. It really got mixed uh, reviews. And so in, in our stores, we see a lot of T200s that are still going out the door mm -hmm. um, because it's just an all-around category that fits oh, really yeah. well. But then we see the new one, and the new ones made those refinements and, and I, I think put it as one of the leaders on the top. There's some others that are really, really um, important to note here. Mm -hmm. And that is, is if we're just looking at some of the votes, there's two different Mizuno irons that hit this market. 
That's true. Yep. And so one of them was the JPX 923 forged. Yep. Um, kind of this first in its class in terms of forging. Uh, the uh, Mizuno engineers have found a way to kind of mill a deeper pocket to make the face a little bit thinner. So not only could they kind of maintain and hold that feel that Mizuno is pop popular for, but they could also maintain some more ball speed, yeah. launch and spin too. And the other one um, that they did really well with was the uh, 923 JPX Hot Metal Pro. Mm -hmm. And so if we we're talking about someone that had a lot of spin, uh, we could use this because it's de-lofted. And w from that perspective, we could knock a little bit of the spin down. We can help straighten that out. We can get more, more ball speed to it. Um, and mm -hmm. the, the other one that really kind of catches in there is the TaylorMade 790, the P790. Yeah. Sure. Um, that's been a really, really good club for a, uh, a fair number of years Long since time. they launched it. Yeah. I think the original one was 2017 now, I think. So that's, yeah. we're talking... You know, six years. I think that's been. Has there been four different models I think now? We just four updates. Uh, to I it? think we're just on the fourth. Okay. I believe. So I mean, and every one of them, at least in the so the testing we've done, the P790 has always been, I think, the hottest in this category in terms yes. of just pure ball speed, right? And whether the spin works out for that player or not, you know, and yeah. that is kind of up to you and your fitting. But the ball speed, given the loft that it has, not being like the strongest of them, seems to always be just the fastest, the hottest well, and in what, this category. Yeah, and what most companies do is they're always trying to think about what next, Yeah, how do we make it better, what's better. And that that's kind of the whole idea in terms of all of these categories, what's better. Well, the 790's made some major improvements over the years from where it was a little bit more unpredictable in terms of it ball was. speeds and distances and call it maybe flyer lies. Yeah. Uh, those have kind of all but been eliminated and so now we see a lot more consistency so the engineering is a little mm -hmm. bit different to that the other one that was um, also high on that list and i'd put this in the uh, category uh is the serixon zx um, m mark ii yep the z zx5 yep and with the forged body as well um feel is a huge part of it they also it also has a little bit more loft um it it really hit the market this year, and that was a large part of our market share that I don't want to overlook because it had a lot of votes to that too, but just mm -hmm. not quite as many as, yeah. as some of these others. Certainly kind of like the, maybe, you know, the honorable mention, if you will, is kind of oh, what that yeah. category falls into, or that club falls into, because um, I know we the, the Shrixon ZX7 and ZX5 Mark II did really well in the Golf WRX members' choice yes. voting really well. And so, not surprising to see those up there. And I think the previous ZX irons were so popular, like for, I guess, the golf junkies out there, like they knew right away that this set of irons was really good. And so, I think you, ca you kind of saw a little bit more steam get uh, sort of behind the, the Mark II irons from Shrixon. And then I actually want to give some credit to the ZX4 that they released in the Game yeah. Improvement category, because that looks way better than the previous one. It and does. so, it kind of like, it almost makes that whole lineup just, you know, they, they, they're they synchronizing a lot better. That whole, the, the whole Mark II set, the ZX-7, ZX-5, ZX-4. Um, I think yeah. they did a really good job with their irons this year. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. So speaking of the, I guess, maybe a ZX-7 or player's cavalry, I don't know if I'm foreshadowing here or not. Yeah. But the, the tour player, the pro, the low handicap golfers, the iron models that second swing fitters kind of, um, chose for the top three in this category? Well, number one, with without really having to, to think about it, was the Titleist T100. Yeah. It has absolutely captured the market for this because it blends both blade style and cavity back to the best yep. of one. Also, it has the largest market share in terms of Titleist players on the PGA, on all tours, not just, just the PGA Tour, on all tours. Um, it has the largest iron market share um, for any of their sales. Mm -hmm. So huge stalwart for them has been when we talked about the AP2 lineup yep. and that transitioned into the T100 lineup. They also had a T100S, which is a little strong loft at yep. it. That's included into this. And now they have a T150, mm -hmm. which again is just a little stronger lofted, maybe a little, little, a little bit, bit thicker bigger, top yeah. line to that. But we're finding that um, as we're looking at the what's in the bag for a lot of the 
the staffers of this is we're finding kind of a T100 into a T150 set. Right. Because they're... And maybe a T200, like three iron or something like yeah. that, you know? Yeah, which um, which is another category to its own. Right. But absolutely. Yeah. Um, second place was what you mentioned, we just talked about a little bit ago, and that's the Cerix and ZX7. Mm -hmm. The Mark II on that is, I think, probably the most underrated or maybe unknown competitor in the business that way. Uh, they We did see a little bit more advertising from them. We, we yeah. had seen a little bit more, which was, which was good. Um, but that was one even from fittings. We kind of had to, hey, let's try this. Let's sneak this one in here. Mm -hmm and just give this a shot, and all of a sudden we see the, everything yeah. that we want to get out of an iron, and we go, well, this is too good to be true. Well, it's not. And it kind of proves like how some of the other companies out on the market, really, um, they're looking to make improvements to things. Because the ZX-7, the original, the previous model, was good, but not this good. Yeah. And I think they've, they've um, the mainframe where they have added a little bit more weight, puts a little bit better number on it. They're a little larger in size than like a T200. So they're they have a they're a little bit more forgiving. Yeah. So we saw we saw more ball speed, we saw generally higher launch and spin numbers, and we saw straight. Yeah. We're going, all right, those are all the things that I want to get out right. of an iron. I'm not sure what else you would want as a golfer, you know, right. when you're testing and you see maybe a little bit faster, a little bit more ball speed. Yeah. But it's still going a straighter, even straighter. Like, what's the you know the dispersion's even smaller? What's the point of trying anything else at that point? And I think the uh, the third thing that was really that really stood out was the Ping I two thirty. Yeah. And Ping really went back to the drawing board to make something that was all encompassing as well. Um, they haven't necessarily been a leader in this this pro style, um, low handicap style. They've had options. Um, Ping is normally, they, they've generally had like an I series, which is a little bit more for the player. Yep. They've had a G series, which is a bit more for the game improvement style. Um, and we've seen that kind of through the years um, move through, like for instance, they had the, the blueprint irons that came out a yep. few years ago. Itty bitty tiny blades. Tiny. They really, they're, they're going to fit like like the tenth of a percent of the market. Yeah. And, and that, but that, that wasn't what they're aimed for. They're not going out to grab market share with an iron like that. No. They're, they're trying to satisfy the, the tour level player with that and then give that as an option to, to the everyday player if they wanted it. But the I-230 really hits all the marks as well. They've got 33 degrees of loft, so they compete with like a T200 that's, mm -hmm. that's 34 or maybe 32. So they're, same thing with the Cerixons at 33. You're, you're in that market where you have a little bit more loft but you have forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So they really, uh, Ping really stepped it forward to that. And I'm, I'm interested in seeing what's gonna happen next year because that will hold over. It's gonna be a model for them. Yep. And then we'll see if, if anything else comes out um, to kind of s put into that market space. Cause that's not something Ping has normally been um, at the top of. Right. But they certainly are with this and um, we also see some of the other stalwarts that are that are in there. Yeah, Callaway's got some stuff in there. If we're talking about the Apex, and they have mm -hmm. a whole new lineup. Yep. You know, Apex Pro. It's probably MD, didn't even get enough CDs. time for that one. Maybe it's up there on a longer year. You know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, more time, I guess, available type of thing. I absolutely see that going forward because it it released just let, like about a month, month yeah. and a half ago. Um, I definitely see that going forward. Yeah. Because those are the ones that even in fittings already. I'm starting to see people really gravitate towards. They like the look. They like the feel. Yeah. We like the performance aspect. Of sure, it. sure. Um, and then, okay, just speaking on the ping. I, I mean, I210 was their player's cavity iron for a long time. Like they're yeah. kind of their go-to, you know, inline iron. And I still play it, and I I love it. And there's a lot of people that swear by the I210s. Yep. And so to replace that after, well, a it was. I-210 was in line for a long time for a reason. It was so good. Yeah. But to replace it, it better be a really freaking good club. And so I think they did deliver on that from all yeah. accounts. You know, I mean, it seems like the I-230 is just a little bit better in every category there compared to the I-210. So that speaks very highly of it, at least to me, who's playing I-210 right now. So. Well, and we put, we put that into, you talk about ping staffers. Yeah. And that's 
most likely the club that they're playing. It's true. Yeah. Just a very few of them might be playing the blueprint. It's possible. Like we've seen some guys like uh, Ustazen, I think, yep. may have played him, and Finau, Finau was yep. playing. But some I, I, of those. other than those two, though, like it's, yeah, you don't see a lot of blueprints, and um, it's a, the I two thirty is the kind of the runaway favorite, if you will, for ping staffers right. of what club they're playing. So, um, yeah, I mean that's I, I will endorse that one as you know, and the little testing I've seen and done with that. So, um, last category for the irons here, we're gonna go kind of again in that. We'll call it the light, light flex, maybe moderate swing speed, or uh, quote unquote women's category for irons. So, curious what the fitters kind of responses were to this one. Well, you know, ping GLE three wins. Yeah, going away, and I there are some other really high quality ones that that were in there for second, third, even fourth choices. Mm-hmm. But I think, I think ping as a whole has made this movement towards the engineering of women-specific type clubs. Um, We see that from a company perspective. Like as an example, these other companies, they do clubs for women. Yeah. Ping is is starting with the woman and making clubs just absolutely for them. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of looking at that market. We go back and, and, you know, just a short history to Ping and they were essentially there at the very beginning for the LPGA Tour. Um, they were one of the biggest sponsors and have been and still are. Um, we talk about the number of women that are playing ping irons, and that's not that they're playing women's irons. Just they're just playing ping equipment. Yeah. Um, and so it doesn't surprise me that this kind of hops in there. Yep. The, the GLE3 has been absolutely wonderful. They've made some refinements, the looks, the colors. It's really, really mm-hmm. good. Um, the second choice behind that is going back to what we talked a little bit earlier about launch. And that is that uh, we were fitting a lot of Mizuno um, hot metal high launches, that 923 really? JPX. Yep. We're seeing that as a great option because, again, we need loft. We need yep. to get that thing up. When it's up, it'll carry farther. It'll go farther. And uh, that was the second by pretty close margin, too. Yeah. So it's interesting to note that that's in there. Um, a couple others that came along with it. We see both of the TaylorMades perform well. Okay. Um, they had the Stealth Women's, which was just a light head. Yeah. So it's not specifically women's, but it is it is a lighter head for mm-hmm. slower swing speeds. Then they also had the uh, Stealth Two or the Stealth HD. Yes. Which again was a little bulkier, like you mentioned, s- slimmer face. Yeah. But allows the the weight yeah. to get center gravity is just so low and so far behind yeah. it that. And, and one of the things in, that Callaway is really, really, really good at is they're in here as well with their Riva lineup. Mm-hmm. And we've seen this from a couple of different aspects of equipment. Um, Callaway does a great job with it, much like what Ping is doing, to get very specific for the women's game. So they're not treating that as an afterthought. Um, it's, like I said too, is like we, we see Titleist comes into the mix. Mm-hmm. Um, the Titleist is making golf clubs for every golfer, just like TaylorMade is, just like any of the companies are. Um, but we see a little bit more, maybe it's just focused marketing, but it's it's definitely the engineering aspect. So in the, in the women's um, iron game, we have so many options to this. And that's mm-hmm. the beauty of it. It's like, for me as a fitter, it's okay having this discussion with, with the customer and saying, all right, well, is there anything you want to try? Because really, it's a customer-driven process, right? And if if there's not, it's it's kind of trying to figure out. Okay, well, let's we're going to try a Callaway and a Ping yeah, and yeah. a Titleist and a TaylorMade, and all of a sudden you get Mizuno in, and you get you. Th- there's plenty of others too. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. And especially that, I mean, it, it is cool to see the the high launch from JPX nine twenty three. Yes. the Mizuno one get in there, and I guess talk about the the. You know the game improvement irons and the the women's category too, because I think it shows that maybe the the I guess the industry as a whole is going a little too strong with these lofts a little bit, and maybe turning that back a little bit, turning that dial back to make sure there's enough launch and enough height on these iron shots for the moderate swing speeds out there is probably a needs to be needs to become a priority a little bit because um, it just yeah. if, if those irons are doing so well in the fittings, I think that maybe speaks to the need for loft a little bit. 
I think as a trend, what I've seen over the years is that com companies reduce loft to try to reduce a little bit of launch and spin mm -hmm. because as an average, most, most players have more launch and spin than they need. Mm, and sure. so and so in doing that we may we, we can get the ball to maybe come down a little bit in launch not as spin as much doesn't curve as much carries farther uh, we may see a distance gain to that that actually started way back when with ping and even the i2 series as we go back into the 80s and we, yeah. s we started to see a whole lineup that was less lofted than everyone else's traditional um, what what may have happened in the in the meantime as we've kind of re you see this reduction, reduction, reduction. Yeah. Is that we go, okay, now we're on the other side of it. And that happened because of the ball. That's true. Yeah, and the so ball, really, the yeah, yeah, really, the ball, yeah. the ball's changed the market in that. It's like, um, I let people know, it's like, in terms of drivers, we have the longest and straightest drivers with the golf balls of today's technology, right? It's also the same thing that's happening with irons, although we don't need the longest irons ever. Mm hmm we need to we need to make sure that we have the right iron in there and that it does the job and that that's that's where a fitting really comes into play is we have to balance what club goes in where do we stop with an iron where do we start with maybe a hybrid Correct, or, yeah. or a fairway wood mm -hmm. i mean those, those are the i say critical thoughts about the the set and that's what we want to try to to get a handle on um also knowing if you come in with your 20 year old iron and it it flies x far yeah and this new seven iron goes 15 yards farther it's because it's not a seven iron it just says seven on the bottom it's more like a six iron yeah probably we, or even a five we have to we have to kind of translate the technology yeah that we had versus what we have now yeah and so that that's really where the importance of the fitting comes in because i know just myself but i also know the other fitters in our our um um, in all of our stores and online, they're they're looking to maximize your enjoyment in the game. What can we get for you mm -hmm. that gives you an advantage to play better golf, hit better shots, yeah. have more fun? Right. That's yeah. ultimately what this is all about, and I think that's actually a perfect way to wrap this thing up. Uh, yeah. So that was. Thank you for putting together the survey and kind of coordinating with all the fitters and getting the responses. I know. Um, that's some really good data and information that I know actually you guys could take into future years too when maybe looking oh, yeah. back golfers need some used clubs it's kind of where we specialize in too at Second Swing so 100%. Um, golfers thank you for watching and listening to uh, I guess our fitters choice for drivers and irons presented by Tyler Fitzel uh, Tyler thank you for joining and putting this together and then presenting it for us really great stuff um, golfers make sure you leave a comment and uh, thank Tyler as well if you have any questions let us know um, and then subscribe uh, to the podcast or on the YouTube channel. Tyler, thank you again. Thanks, Drew.